Hey friends, in this video we're going to be discussing the 10 new commander cards that you can find exclusively in the pre-constructed deck Painbow, which is a five color deck whose central theme is all about multicolor matters. But before we jump into the cards, two quick reminders. First, if you want to see all Dominary United previews, head on over to mtgpreviews.com where we keep an up-to-date list of all the previews as they're being released. And secondly, if you want to get your hands on these Dominary United cards, you can pre-order them at our sponsor, cardking.com slash mtggoldfish. And be sure to ask for a scoop sticker in the order notes. All right, let's jump into the card, starting with the face commander of the deck, Jared Carthalian. This is a five color planeswalker, costs Wooburg to cast, starting loyalty five, it's plus one ability, is create a 3 3 Kavu creature token with trampled its all colors, so you immediately give yourself a blocker as you're taking them up, and it's all colors, which is going to be highly relevant in this pre constructed deck. Negative three ability, choose up to two target creatures. For each of them, put a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the number of colors it is. So if you have two five color creatures on the battlefield, you're distributing a total of 10 plus one plus one counters, which is very powerful. So it either does nothing or it does a lot, which is high variance, but very cool. And it's negative six ability, return target multicolored card from your graveyard to your hand. If that card was all colors, draw a card and create two treasure tokens. This negative six ability is very powerful. It's recursion, it's card draw, it's mana generation, and most notably is Jared can actually use it the second turn he's on the battlefield because you can plus one him to six and then you can negative six him, destroying him and getting that value immediately. So it's a bit of a payoff, it's a little bit risky, but it's very good. So what are we doing with Jared? Well, the pre-constructed deck has a good indication. There's Glintai Nephilim. This is a four color 2-2 creature that when it deals combat damage to a player, draw that many cards. So if you give it four counters with Jared's negative three ability, it's gonna draw four additional cards each time it deals combat damage. And as far as inclusions are concerned, one great way of taking the deck is Attracts a Praetor's Voice. This is a four color creature that scales up very well with counters on it. If you put four counters on it with Jared, it's flying, vigilance, death touch, and lifelink. So you're gonna be gaining four more life each time it's chonking people in the air. And also, on your end step, you proliferate, so you put a counter on every single creature that already has a counter on it. So you can go like a five color, plus one, plus one counter, proliferate style deck with Atroxa in the 99. And also, speaking of plus one, plus one counters, Ramos Dragon Engine, while is a colorless creature, so it doesn't benefit from Jared's negative three ability, uh, who oh boy, does it deal with counters as well, and... When you do have counters on it, you can remove five counters and add 10 mana double Wooburg to your mana pool to cast those big five color spells. Moving on, we have the secondary commander in the deck, Jensen Carthalian, Druid Exile, which I presume is probably like of the same lineage of Jared. This is a Selesnia creature, however, its color identity and commander is actually Wooburg because you can pay five mana and tap it to add Wooburg to your mana pool. So it's a two mana, two, two legendary creature, human druid that says whenever you cast a multicolored spell, scry one. And if that spell was all colors, create a four, four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. So Jensen is kind of interesting in terms of it's an okay payoff if you're just casting multicolor spells, but you really only get much payoff if the spell is five color, which in current card pool on Commander, there's not that many five color spells. Um, so getting maximum value out of Jensen is gonna be kind of difficult. So what do I expect to do with Jensen? Well, it's kind of difficult. First, you are making four, four white angel creature tokens whenever he casts a five color spell. So you could go angel tribal kind of with cards like Rampage of the Valkyries. And also you are making tokens so you can double those tokens with doubling season. But like I said, casting five color spells very consistently is gonna be difficult even in a basically a focused Jensen deck. So I don't know how, how efficient, how effective that strategy is going to be. You can also just focus on the fact that you're scrying really easily. Like it's really easy to just cast a bunch of multicolor spells as opposed to specifically five color spells. So you can take advantage of, of cards like Elminster, which will make your instants and sorceries cost less to cast for each time you're scrying. And it's also a multicolor spell itself. 
But either way, I don't find any of these directions particularly powerful. Let me know in the comment section if you have any really cool brews for Jensen because I'm kind of out of ideas before I even started. So <laughs> moving on. Next up, we have a really cool powerhouse for a five color deck. This is Primeval Spawn. This is a 10 mana, 10, 10 creature. Costs five and Wooburk to cast, so it's no slouch in terms of how much mana investment you need for it. It's a creature avatar. If Primal Spawn would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast or no mana was spent to cast it, exile it instead. So that means cheating it into play for free is going to be very difficult or cheating it into play from reanimation effects are going to be very difficult. So no getting around it. You got to spend at least some mana to cast a Primeval Spawn, but the payoff is definitely worth it in a five color deck. It's 10-10 uh, with Vigilance, Trample, and Lifelink. So it's huge and it has a powerful leave the battlefield ability when it leaves the battlefield exile the top 10 cards of your library you may cast any number of spells of total mana value 10 or less from among them without paying their mana cost so it's both card advantage and mana advantage when it leaves the battlefield so it's really nice if you blink it it doesn't necessarily have to die you could just do like a ghostly flicker effect and get its value over and over again um and it's even if it's not being blinked or anything, it's smacking people for 10 life drain or life swing rather. So this is a really sweet card. Where do I would where would I put it? Uh, in the 99 of Joda Archmage Eternal, that seems like a slam dunk. You basically paid uh, five mana to cast it instead of 10. Ramos Dragon Engine is also another fantastic home for it because Ramos is so good at generating lots of mana. And Jared Carthalian is also a fantastic home for it as well. Uh, it's going to be hard to cast a 10 drop in a Jared deck. However, if you can do that, it is a five color creature, so it will get five counters from Jared, and that means. 1515 15, Vigilance Trample Lifelink coming at somebody's face, which is fantastic. All right, moving on, we have another super awesome beater, and this is Two Headed Hellkite. This is another five color creature, costs one and Wooburk for a 5 5 dragon, flying menace and haste whenever it attacks draw two cards so you cast it and the turn that you cast it it can immediately attack hit somebody for five in the air and start drawing cards immediately this is a fantastic threat slash card advantage engine in a five color deck now where would i put it um unfortunately i don't think jared is going to be beating out the ur dragon here i think this is tailor made for the ur dragon honestly even has that one colorless pip in its mana cost to be reduced by the Ur Dragon. Um, and yeah, it's it's a dragon, it's five color. Ur Dragon loves dragons, it's five color. Match made in heaven, very simple. Um, I assume this was made for some deck designer, the designer's uh, Ur Dragon deck. Next up, we got Ramos Dragon Engine. Ramos is really good at casting five color spells because it's uh, activated ability generates a ton of mana. And if you cast two headed Hellkite, you're going to be adding five counters on Ramos. So this is just a win win. And then finally, Jared Carthalian. Obviously, it's a five color creature. It's going to get maximum value out of Jared's two abilities. So that's great too. Um, but I honestly think Jared's the weakest option um, for the two headed Hellkite out of the three. I think Ur Dragon's the best, and then Ramos, and then Jared, but it's going to be good in all those decks as well. All right, next up we have Iridian Maelstrom. It's a five color spell, Wooburk to cast for a sorcery that says destroy each creature that isn't all colors. So this is tailor made board wipe that is kind of asymmetrical in a five color deck. Um, if you're not in a, a five color creature deck, you're not going to be running it. But if you are in a five color creature deck, then this is the best board wipe in the entire deck and one of the best cards in the entire deck. And the art is phenomenal, but not much to say here. If you're in a five color deck that's creature focused, run this. If not, just pass it. All right, moving on. We have another big old Wooburg spell, Unite the Coalition. This is two and Wooburg for an instant. Choose five. You may choose the same mode more than once. So a lot of flexibility here. So mode number one, target permanent phases out or target player draws a card or exile target player's graveyard or unite the coalition deals two damage to any target or destroy target artifact or enchantment. Now, all of these abilities are going to be super useful. I think the damage dealing here is a little bit on the low end. I would have liked it to be three damage instead of two. But I mean, destroying of up to five artifacts and or enchantments 
phasing out permanence from having uh, board wipes happen to you, protecting stuff, or just stopping any surprise attackers from killing you. Drawing cards is always nice. And of course, spot removal for a player's graveyard is always fantastic. Now, where would I run it? Again, Jerry Carthalian, no surprise, is very good um, in, in, in that deck. Jensen is all right, too. It will actually make an angel creature token out of it. And uh, I keep saying Ramos, but Ramos I absolutely love. It puts five counters on Ramos. Ramos is a happy little dragon. Uh, win-win there. That's my personal favorite of the three. All right, moving on, we have Falaji Wayfair, which is a two and a green, two, four human scout, which you might think would make it a just a mono green creature, but it has a special ability that says it's all colors. This ability doesn't affect its color identity, which means it can be in any neck whose commander's color identity includes green. So that's a cool way of getting around the color identity restriction. And its other ability is really, really good. Multicolored spells you cast have Convoke. So your creatures can help cast those spells. Each creature you tap while casting a multicolored spell pays for one or one mana of a color that creature is. So this is a great way to use your creatures as basically pseudo mana dorks to help ramp out your big expensive multicolor spells. So where would I see Falaji Wayfair do serious work in? Well, she can't fit in a General Ferris Rockerick deck because she is green. Uh, however, if you are running a multicolor deck that has General Ferris Rockerick in the 99, this is a match made in heaven because whenever you cast a multicolored spell, you create a 4-4 red and white golem artifact creature token with General Ferris Rockerick. And that means more creatures that you can tap to convoke with Falaji Wayfarer. And same thing with Hero Precinct 1. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, create a 1-1 white human creature token. Again, these are just more things you can tap down to convoke out your other spells. And as for a commander, I think a cool shout out here would be Niv Mizzet Reborn. This is a Wooburg commander that's all about multicolor spells, specifically color pairs. So something like General Ferris Rockerick would be uh, a fine addition here. And Hero Precinct 1 is also going to be fantastic there too. Um, so yeah, this, this would be a fantastic deck. But pretty much any five color deck, Falaji Wafer is going to be a fantastic inclusion in to just ramp out your spells. All right, moving on, we have a cool multicolor matters removal spell on a stick mana cannons this is two and a red for an enchantment that says whenever you cast a multicolored spell mana cannons deals x damage to any target where x is the number of colors that spell is so you can put this in any multicolor deck and get some value out of it however you really want to be casting five color spells to get the maximum damage out of this up to five damage so where would i put this Again, Ramos Dragon Engine, Jared Carthalian, Jensen Carthalian, all of these care about five color spells. So the more colors in your spells, the better, and Mana Cannons is just going to be fantastic in these decks in particular. All right, moving on, we have Obsidian Obelisk, aka Arcane Signet at home. This is a two mana artifact that enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it for colors, or you can tap it to add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast a multicolored spell. So this is obviously going for a multicolor matters deck it's a fine budget inclusion especially if you don't have like 10 fetches 10 shocks and all that nonsense it is a nice secondary arcane signet in a multicolor matters deck and it fits in basically any of them i threw up niv Miz of reborn and ramus here but literally any multicolor matters deck is going to love obsidian obelisk especially if you're budget friendly all right, moving on, we have Tiller Engine. This is a two mana, one three artifact creature. Whenever a land enters the battlefield tapped under your control, you choose one, untap that land, or tap target non-land permanent an opponent controls. So this is basically just Amulet of Vigor on a stick. Uh, it has the same ability specifically just for lands, which is notably the most important part of Amulet of Vigor. And what you do with it is either you can speed up your budget mana base, because if you're like a five color budget mana base, uh, a lot of your cards are going to enter tapped, like the tri Triomes, um, the tri lands are all entering tapped. So Tiller Engine can kind of speed up your curve a little bit. However, just like Amulet of Vigor, it's going to enable some land based combos. One example is Tiller Engine, Omnath, Locus of Rage, and Perilous Forays. So the way this combo works is you sacrifice a creature with Perilous Forays. Searching your library for a basic land card, putting it onto battlefield tapped. 
This is going to trigger on mass lane fall ability, which will make a 5 5 elemental token. And it will also trigger the Tiller Engine's ability to untap the basic land that just entered. And then you can tap that basic land, sacrifice the elemental you just made with Omnath, deal three damage to any creature or player, and search your library for another basic land, which will make another Omnath and also untap it. And you can repeat that cycle basically as many times as you have basic lands to search up and hopefully kill all your opponents in the same turn. An easy combo, but a very good one. And that covers all 10 new cards from the Painbow Commander Precon deck. I hope you like this first impression of the brand new cards and like and subscribe if you like this sort of content. And until next time, friends, see ya!